Nolan Booth, the second most wanted art thief in the world. Special Agent John Hartley, FBI. How'd you find me? You stole William Strang's lady with the red hat from the tape. You can't prove that was me. I got that on Etsy. Hi, and welcome to Video Club Review. I'm your host, Jim Ferguson, and with me is Hot Hands himself, Rob Dundas, and the Buttercream <laughs> butter Queen, Tiffany Ferguson. Today, we are reviewing Red Notice, starring Dwayne Johnson, Gal Gadot, and Ryan Reynolds. And it was directed by Raw Thurber. It has the distinction of being hailed as Netflix's most expensive production to date. Uh, Rawson previously directed Were the Miller's Dodgeball, um, and he worked with Dwayne Johnson on Central Intelligence and Skyscraper. He'll also be directing the upcoming video game adaptation of The Division. Uh, and he was also actually actually the writer for uh, all of those movies with the exception of Were the Millers, as well as the director. So he's got like a background in comedy movies, which I found, I didn't know that until after I watched it, but his background is all like in basically comedies. So the uh, the tagline for this, or the, uh, the, the, <laughs> the synopsis of this movie is pretty straightforward. An Interpol agent tracks the world's most wanted art thief. That's it, you got a one-liner there. So uh, yeah, with that said, we'll go ahead with our spoiler-free reviews. I thought this was uh, it's very entertaining. It is a, uh, I'll say it's a Ryan Reynolds, Dwayne Johnson movie. If you ex like either of those two particular characters, and I think that they're their own characters now, they, they don't play characters, they play themselves, basically, in this movie. It's entertaining, it's fun. Um, it's a very straightforward, <laughs> not a great deal of depth, but it's a fantastic, uh, fun Friday night movie. Yeah, it was fine. <laughs> uh, Ryan Reynolds is always hilarious and charming. Um, and Dwayne Johnson, too. I, I always love him in movies, and Gal Gadot is also there. Um, I don't know. It was really good background for my Animal Crossing, which I was playing the entire time. <laughs> it's yeah, it's a turn your it's a turn your mind off movie for sure. If if you blink, you're not missing anything. You'll be fine. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you, you don't turn your if you don't turn your brain off, <laughs> there's problem. There's problems abound. So. <laughs> we'll we'll get into that in the yeah. uh, the spoiler so, territory. I got lots. I'm sure you do. I was thinking about you a lot during this viewing. Yep. I know how your uh, I know how your viewing mind works. So uh, yeah, so my my uh, spoiler for your review is that it's it's definitely a turn your brain off movie. Um, turn your brain off, have some popcorn. It's like if you're in that kind of headspace to just want some entertainment and not overthink the dialogue or the plot or the multitude of plot holes. Um, it does deliver on the entertainment premise, and it does and it leans hard into it. Like it's it goes for that genre and that and it I think it knows it and it pushes that. So it's not trying to be something else for the most part. Overall, it felt like a movie that at times tried to be clever for a few minutes, and then it went back to being um, everything falling into place and don't think too hard about it for like half an hour, and then it would try hard again for like a few minutes. Like it would try to explain some and rationalize things in like an intelligent way, but it would only do it a little bit, and it would go back to just kind of be dumb. The three leads all played like we like you said the, the versions of themselves. Um, Gal Gadot is not in it a lot, but or as much as the other as the other two, but they basically play the versions of themselves that we're all familiar with, uh, yeah. and they they do it even more on the nose in this yeah. than normal, if that's if that's even possible. It feels like um, it's on purpose. Yeah. So like again, if that's something you want for two hours, then yes, watch it. But this movie had lots of problems. I found myself switching from enjoying it to not enjoying it throughout the movie. Mm. In the end, I had the impression that it was an okay, not great movie with some good, with really good moments. So those moments almost at times made me want to like switch my viewpoint of it. And then something would happen. I'd be like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> here we go again. I actually really aligned with that because I was, that's the better way of saying I felt the exact same way. I was yeah. actually like, I'm on board. I'm off. Oh, that saved it. I'm back. Now I'm off again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but I give it a five out of 10. Um, I give it a, a six Ryan Reynolds out of 10. Yeah, I'd probably give it like a four, four uh, shots of aviation gin out of 10. Nice. <laughs> you noticed the, uh, did you notice the aviation gin product placement? Yeah. Well, apparently The Rock too had product yeah, placement had... for his tequila, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, is that a spoiler? No, that's not a spoiler. Oh, okay. Um, that's, okay. So that's that being said, consumerism. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, that's the end of our spoiler-free territory. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, you want to see it. Um, like I said, like we both, like kind of all touched on, it's just an entertaining popcorn flick. If that's what you're into, go watch it. Uh, it's a very pretty movie. Netflix spent a ton of money on it. Lots of money on marketing, clearly, because we're seeing everybody market the heck out of it after the movie came out. Still, right now, 
and Ryan Reynolds doing his really brilliant cross promotional marketing that he's so good at. Yeah, strap in. It's not Ryan Reynolds was not playing a character; he was playing himself. So he's a he's a he's a art thief, but he's a, he's Ryan Reynolds as an art thief. So like, and his jokes are very much Ryan Reynolds. Um, he's pretty good. He wasn't as good in his parkour in this, and like, and so we're in the art uh, museum or display. And he's about to st- somebody's going to steal something, and the Rock walks in. He always wears a fucking turtleneck. But, I almost uh, wonder if it's a joke from that like old picture of him wearing the fanny pack and the turtleneck when he has hair. Well, that's yeah, I was thinking too. Yeah. It's <laughs> immediately where my mind went to. I, I wonder if like Ryan Reynolds is like, you should totally wear the turtleneck, dude. <laughs> yeah, you look so good. Oh, it'll be great. <laughs> it seems like this movie was just a vehicle to display their humor and to self-deprecate of all their other characters and all their other cliches. It honestly has so many movie cliches of their own movies. Like it had to be done on purpose. Yeah. So. It, I know, and I kind of know what you're saying about Ryan Reynolds. Like he is was his typical Ryan Reynolds self. He was cracking jokes, and and I laughed out loud numerous times at some of the, at some of the jokes. There are a bunch of them that was just like whatever. They're just like they didn't hit, but like oh, he joke. did have some good ones that hit. What what I found is that if if Ryan Reynolds was like a gag machine, like he's yeah. just this machine that throws out gags, he was churned to 120 for this, and not necessarily. 120 I don't mean 120 percent as in like he was way funnier than normal I mean the quantity no, no. he was like his character was nothing but one-liners like he yeah, wasn't he like was... I like him when he has like something to do and then he has one-liners that he throws out once in a while while doing it and they and they hit more often than not this was like I'm gonna throw out every one-liner I can think of out the wall and one out of ten are gonna hit and nine yeah. out of ten are gonna just be like he's giving one-liners so it almost got like to the point where it was like I was it was tiring it was tired like I was tired of it I agree because you listen to it you're like okay like that was yeah it was a constant flex like it was a vehicle for his comedy like yeah. he was a blooper reel but that was his character in the movie yeah, yeah I actually read something that said they took like a couple extra days to film because he just had like so much material that he was like pumping out and riffing on I don't know if that's true or not but I feel like it probably is well, he had a few that were honestly really funny. Like I laughed out loud. Like I was by myself watching this and I guffawed out loud like at least probably six or seven times at things he said. I was like, okay, that was a good one. So well, like, yeah, if you throw enough jokes are, out, some of them are going to hit. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, if I have to take, I guess, that many ones that don't hit, and they weren't bad. They're just him being snarky. Typical re- like Reynolds snarkiness, right? Yeah, it was just like his whole character was built on that. And yeah, it was, kind he, of a it lot. was very one-dimensional. And and The Rock, or oh, Dwayne, Rock. Dwayne Johnson, was very one-dimensional. I was actually really curious to see Gal Gadot. I, up until the twist at the end, I thought she was like going to be like a legitimate bad guy. Like when the agent, Interpol agents yeah. come into the, the Indiana Jones cave at the end, and she immediately shoots at them. You're, you're jumping she, ahead. Like, <laughs> no, I know. I'm just. It's just. It's, this is like her. Like she had. She had potential to actually be a bad guy. Because I just thought, you know, what's gonna happen. What I thought in this movie when I first started watching it was that it's gonna be like Fast and the Furious, and that every single villain ends up becoming part of the team. Team up really early into the movie. And no, she was actually like the antagonist and the bad guy for much of the movie. And at first, I thought she was. When I thought she was ruthless and like was willing to like kill people and stuff, I was like, okay, I actually kind of like seeing. I've never seen her be like mm-hmm. a villain. I actually want to see Gal Gadot be a villain. Um, and then that got turned on its head. So then I was like, oh, there you go. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, I mean, like, you know, like yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. It's very, it was, it was a fast and furious sort of movie. You're right with the globe trotting and everything else. Uh, I'll start like, I'll start off with some stuff that uh, parkour fight on the scaffolding in the museum. That's not how scaffolding works. It's just pulling out the magic pins. You don't pull a pin out. that's under a ton of weight. And all of a sudden the floor falls out because if that's the case, then everybody dies. It's, it's fucking dumb. What if the that pins whole, red? What if the pins red though? You don't pull pins out, and the whole thing doesn't fall apart. And he doesn't pull one master pin at the very top of the scenario, and everything collapses. That's that not a, how that works. That was a load it's bearing not, pin. It's, <laughs> it's yeah, it's the only load bearing pin apparently in that whole setup. And I'm like, okay, yeah. this isn't like a like a mouse trap or whatever that game is where you like everything pull everything and it all falls down. Wait, so you know it was interesting. Sorry, to, before you move on from that, the scaffolding thing at the beginning with Ryan Reynolds like doing parkour through it and fighting. He was like, okay, he's actually skilled in this. Like when he was first running from Dwayne Johnson and was like, he was moving quick. And like, I was like, okay, this guy's like, he's actually going to be portrayed as like a guy who's like, like he's actually like a master thief and and really like good at what he does. And he's hard to catch. But then like after that one scene in the thing, he didn't, that didn't come up again for him. He was no longer that guy. He was kind of just like a a bumbling clumsy guy for the rest of the movie. I'm like, so then I was like, what, (laughs) 
Oh, and he's in a master. I mean, maybe correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if you need to be a master parkour and martial artist to be a the perfect art thief in the world. But it kind of made you think that he was that physically capable, and this is why he is so good. And then later he's like, oh, he's comic relief, and he's he's fluked his way from being the most amazing art thief in the world. Like, and then Dwayne Rock Johnson, they jump down and nearly survive. And he gets into a Lamborghini. And this is where the first time I laughed, like, Porsche out loud. Vans, of course. And then he is revving it up. I'm like, okay, here comes the Fast and Furious thing. This is, I'm like, all right, well, man, this is what yeah. we're in for. And he stomps on the gas and he gets smashed by a Volkswagen van. And I fucking laughed out loud. I think it was an ice cream truck. Something to, like, literally. Yeah. It like, was funny. Fast and Furious, nope. It was just, it, it, the movie was very much like, we're going to hint at every trope that these characters have been in and then we're going to take it away i was up to like, that point though like up up to that point and the scaffolding thing and the, up up to the car being smashed i was oh, like oh. okay this is good like i'm actually enjoying this also does coca-cola melt metal and plastic like coca-cola uh, he poured he took a kid's coca-cola bottle and placed that there's an egg uh cleopatra's three eggs in this movie that are all like worth millions of dollars and there's this display in the art museum and dwayne johnson is also uh, an art, I don't know what even the right word is, he knows his art, apparently, even though he's an FBI agent, pours it on this, what is supposed to be this priceless Fabergé egg. Well, it's a duplicate, of course. It melts like he somebody had dropped a vat of hydrochloric acid on him. Like, that's not how Coca-Cola works. It's not even how the fake material you build it out of works. I was just like, what is going on? But it like, shows this whole montage at the beginning of the movie of him 3D printing and then getting specific materials yes. and then spray painting and airbrushing and doing all this innate hard, hard. It can be foiled by a can of Coke. It just was like, what the, was the can of Coke product placement as well? Do you think? Uh, I don't think Coca-Cola really? would sign off on that. That's a good it was, point. Yeah, it was Netflix's yeah, was, biggest budget for a feature film. So I read that a couple of times that <laughs> it was the highest, uh, highest budget that they had put out on a movie yet. But I'm mean, like, like a lot of that's got to have been spent on marketing because they're like, I've seen stuff for this movie for like three weeks, four weeks after release. I'm still seeing them marketing the hell out of it, right? Yeah. Well, also, each actor got paid $20 million, hey? Yeah. Um, Gal Gadot actually had to, I think, negotiate. So she would get paid the same as Dwayne Johnson and uh, Ryan Reynolds. But I mean, I mean she wasn't in it nearly as, as much, much as they were. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say. <laughs> I was gonna say. There's a point where you could say, like, you know, this is based on screen time. But I mean, well, I, I would, I, I'd be curious to know what her initial uh, take home was gonna be. Like was it like right. re, was it like five million or was it like oh we're giving you eighteen and them twenty based on screen time you could probably sell that right but yeah. I bet you it's more like the ten to fifteen range or less. She's also looking at like I've, she's another she's a big name so like her name's yep. also going to sell the thing just as much as the other two. Yeah, there's a point where star power trumps the the, the amount of time on screen for sure. Yeah. So like this movie was I, I love movies that globe trot that show like the the stinger flash up on screen of like what city they're oh, going to. God. It did it so in the first half hour though they were like in like. 19 destinations like it was happening so much and so fast so see it was mostly filmed in georgia atlanta the russian georgia. the russian gulag was filmed in georgia i just know the film was mostly filmed in georgia because it was during covid so they didn't really have the means to travel to all these places so I was a like, lot of it was, gr- was like, green screened for sure a lot of it was of... very obviously green screen and i'm so glad i didn't see this in a theater i would have been pissed because it was it was so obvious. Oh, the there was some was bad green. CGI. Yeah. There was some bad CGI. I don't know if you guys noticed the bull when the bull hit the rock. Oh my god! Oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna thing. audio cue right here. I'm gonna put a clip of the bull getting hit, the bull hitting the rock, and then I'm gonna play a clip from the movie Gemini Man, where Will Smith, one of the Will Smith characters in that movie, hits the other one with a motorcycle, and you'll see like the awkward, like non Earth like way that the physics of the of something heavy moves right like the motorcycle moves the way a motorcycle can't move when this bull hits right uh dwayne the rock, the rock yeah. johnson I, I hate calling him that he also it's moves in a way that like people don't move like no nothing moves he's oh. but they, you notice they cut it away from it so fast so they've clearly got that effect back and we're like that's not it <laughs> so they like but but we've, we've spent however much on it so we're gonna show it real quick and then cut away immediately so yeah in the movie like a lot of shit just throughout the movie i was getting really annoyed by like how lazy the writing was with everything just falling into place like not oh. even so much plot so much. holes or things that were just ridiculous like the coke and the and the egg but like just the fact that like things would just fall into place for them they would just be in the, things just worked out constantly and it was like it was happening almost like at a rapid pace where like they would need something and then boom there it is they need this boom there it is it just kept happening kept happening and they tried to explain one of the biggest ones that pissed me right off when it happened 
was when they're handcuffed to each other and the guy gets poisoned by Gal Gadot, the, the villain. That and guy's he, awesome. We got to talk about him afterwards. Yeah, he wakes up and he's shooting at them, doesn't hit them with any bullet, but then shoots the handcuffs. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, but then they, they explain it away by going, oh, actually, he didn't shoot the handcuffs. She slipped him a key and he unlocked it because they're actually, you know, spoiler working together. That was, that way, was part of their plan. That was part I'll, of their plan. I'll, yeah. So the plan was to give this guy a poison, but a poison that he's going to wake up from. Real and quick. still could possibly shoot them with a live with gun. With a gun. That was all part of the plan. And then they, they, they knew in their planning that they weren't going to, he wasn't going to hit any of those shots, right? So that's course, a pretty, right? pretty poor plan. They had good odds. They knew that he was pretty shitty. And he he loves the fact that it's a vintage revolver. So he only got five or six shots. How accurate could he be at super close range while drawing? Mean, yeah. Yeah. They totally gambled and, you know, it paid off. I mean, I wish, like, that's what I was saying about Gal Gadot. I wish she just killed him. Yeah, why didn't she? She just actually poisoned because she's, they're all bad guys who aren't bad. Yeah, nobody but was, like, to, actually shot to, in the movie. We need to like them for further cool. movies. But you said it earlier in the Indi- Indiana Jones tunnel, which I thought that was awesome because Ryan Reynolds walks in this, apparently, in Columbia, where are they? This crazy. Georgia, <laughs> Georgia doesn't have <laughs> topics like that. Anyways, they're in, a, no, they're, they're, in Argen- of- they're in Argentina, where like the Nazis. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's a Nazi bunker um, in Argentina, and Ryan Reynolds is the only person in the world that knows where this is just because his father was an obsessive obsessed with it. treasure hunter and had a secret in a watch that is the real so obsessed with anyways. it that he never went to it exactly exactly so and he's walking down the steps and then Ryan Reynolds is like dan, 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 dan. I was like well this movie just basically points at everything I like was, it just for that fact that was funny I like that but to your point where Gal Gadot could have just killed the guy but we don't want to make her a truly evil Bad. person yet when the DEA or the officers come to arrest them Interpol shows up. She unloads on them. She shoots at them with a rifle. But she like hit none of them. Gun. She hit none yeah. of them. So she's the stormtrooper of art thieves. Like she hits nothing. No, the it's idea not- is she's trying to not hit them. Just like the Rock is a is a FBI agent who's also, and he even makes a point of going, "Why are you shooting at them? You're an FBI agent." He goes, "They're shooting at me." Then I'm like, and he's clearly not. But he's like spraying a machine gun. He could accidentally shoot someone. It's, so you're supposed to now believe at the end of this movie, you're supposed to believe that, that they're all actually not really cool. bad. They're not murderers. They're just they're just fun loving thieves, and so they don't kill people. That's why we have to like them the guys in the tunnel who bounced off the brick wall the one guy got chucked out of a car the other car blew up and exploded and those guys all were assuming just had contusions and bruises every single one of those guys it made a point of the camera showing them get up the guy that got smacked the wall smacked the rocks the camera lingered on him and he actually got to his hands and knees and i i I noticed that i'm like they're pointing out the fact that everybody yeah i mean whether or not everybody actually would survive that whatever but they're making a point of showing us that these people are all surviving it yeah and i mean you're supposed to believe that the characters the main characters knew they would survive that when they threw them into the rocks just like they knew that the drugged up gangster with the revolver wouldn't Wouldn't hit any of the shots right and that's just that's the whole like everything falling into place right like just don't make them so likable like indiana jones killed people all the time have them kill people well you like just to that point you see like marvel and captain america who's a super soldier so bloody strong he kicks a guy and he flies across the room you fly across the room from being kicked your insides are mush like there's a difference between killing like um henchmen and killing police fair enough like all they needed to do was have some henchmen like have some Nazis or so, like have some henchmen come into that cave instead of the DE, the Interpol. And you could have, you could have killed some of them, but it would have been fine and believable. And you wouldn't have not liked the main characters anymore. I mean, the fact of the matter is that Interpol agent Dawes was terrible at her job. She didn't find them a single time without getting a leak from one of them. Every time she showed up, it was because, oh, the bishop told me where you were. Oh, Ryan Reynolds told me where you were. I don't think she showed up a single time on her own, like, investigating merit. I mean, the biggest problem with the movie, other than, like, the fact that it was too long, the everything fell into place and they didn't do a good enough job of... If they just spent more time solving these problems in, like, a creative way rather than just making them solve themselves and also tighten the movie up so it was, like, maybe a half hour shorter so that Ryan Reynolds didn't need to spit out quite so many jokes, it probably would have been a lot better. The, they had the thing happen where the rug gets pulled over from the different characters. Surprise, rug gets pulled out from you. You think you're getting away and surprise. That happened 16 times in the movie to, to various characters. It happened to the good guys. It happened to the bad guys. It happened to the Interpol agent. This whole movie was just people pulling the rug out from under the people or throwing banana peels and making them slip on it. That's how the plot was, kept moving forward was just people who were like surprising and double crossing constantly. But it wasn't so, intelligent enough like Ocean's Eleven to make you like, wow, that was right. a grift. That was so amazing. Right. Like that, so like, interesting. So to segue Tiffany, from that, you, I was going to say, was Tiffany, like out of all those transitions from uh, the train, them just getting clothes, new clothes out of somewhere, getting on a train somehow, uh, getting new vehicles, getting money arbitrarily out of nowhere, like anything like that made you laugh out loud or 
<laughs> made you want to just yell at the TV like, I'm wasting my time. <laughs> she wasn't. She was playing Animal Crossing. I was playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> my island looks so good. Uh, yeah, I'm really glad this wasn't in theaters. And it worked out that they sold the distribution rates to Netflix because yeah. it'd be awful. I think it'd get a much worse review from audiences. If it was in theaters. Yeah. So it's, it's a perfect streaming movie for sure. Stay at home. One- at your house, don't pay money any more money for it than you're already paying. Have some popcorn. Have nobody nobody uh, crinkling their popcorn bag in the row behind you, <laughs> and you're good to go. Right? I just think shorter movie with less lazy problem solving, and it would have been like twenty percent better. And the cars life. in the the cars in the bunker in Argentina, the Indiana Jones bunker. They're all fueled. They all work. Yeah, they've been in there for, since World War II, and there's one of four cars that's armor plated. Because they need that because the bad guys will be, sh- or the good guys will be shooting machine gun fire at them. And it is the Indiana Jones chase on the mine cars, but they're using vehicles. It is almost like instead of the bag with the Fabergé egg in Indiana Jones, it's the kid. It's Data or whoever his name is, short round, being pulled short between round. the two moving wheels. It's, it's a carbon copy of that. And it exits out to an exit that goes this way. It's the same. Ed- oh. <laughs> Anyways, I'm done. Are you sure you don't want to go over a couple more? No, I don't think we have enough time. All right. I just like a couple of random facts. Um, I read that Dwayne Johnson originally wanted Nicolas Cage for Ryan Reynolds' role. So oh, I had a lot oh. of fun, like. Ooh. <laughs> right? Ooh. It could have been. I mean, it would have been awful, but it would have been great. <laughs> I don't want to see that movie. You kind of want to see that movie? Just Wait, It's not the bees, not the bees. It would have been no charm and more craziness. And no, no one-liners or less one-liners. It would have been horrible. Yeah, it wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have worked. It would have been, been great. I love Nicholas. I really. I mean, if you, I I looked at Nicholas Cage's IMDb recently, mm-hmm. and he has been. I mean, he's doing a lot of movies still, like a lot of like like straight to video, whatever. Movies. He does like two movies that bomb that are just stinkers, but then every third movie he's doing is like acclaimed. Has like nine out of ten on IMDb, but they're all like indie films. Yeah, like they're doing space a lot of like art like that. films. He's been doing like every third movie he does one of those and they're they do well and they get reviewed really well. I feel like he could very easily turn that event if here if he plays his cards right into a resurgence. And I hope it does, man. I like I like Nicolas Cage. When he was on when he was like a a leading guy, I like I, I thought he was great. You watch any of his old movies and they're still good. He's still Nicolas Cage all the way yeah, through. Like, there's, he's, fine. There's, he's got oh, he's okay. obviously got like a huge cult following. Yeah. Watching yeah. everything he does. So yeah. Nicholas Cage is doing just fine. I don't think this was the movie to bring him back to the uh, spotlight. No. no. <laughs> well, I don't think he could have carried it. And then it's kind of interesting because speaking of all of the references in the movie, um, like they reference the MacGuffin term that Alfred yep. Hitchcock coined. They ref- they used like a lot of Wilhelm screams, which I only yep. just learned about in that Netflix show, um, The Movies That Made Us, yep. you know, where they use like the same stock sound since like the 50s right and they did that a lot in star wars and indiana jones like yeah very much so george lucas used it a lot yeah so it was definitely like some sort of homage i think from the director i can appreciate what that director was trying to do for sure with the film and the uh, homages and like the the reused sound effects and like the the break in the fourth wall and talking about what he was paying homage to i actually i really like that he did like i think this guy probably like i said with the cleaning this up he could have made it. I think this guy probably has it in to make a really good movie if he's yeah, writing and directing and like has that thought process, but he just has to like, yeah, he has to tidy some stuff up. <laughs> I'm curious if he had something and like a pet project that he's been wanting to do, like he's just himself, like his own movie. I'm wondering what it would be like Cause if he does this. He's had some pretty good movies he's been like he's directed, so I'm curious. Like if it was his idea, I wonder what he would do. Who would he pick? Would it be Nicolas Cage, Ryan Reynolds, and who's the other. On Will Ferrell, there you go. Nicholas Cage, Ryan Reynolds, and Will Ferrell. Okay, They're we'll all save, the same save person in every that. single movie. Save this talk here. At the last thing I want to talk about before we wrap up is I want to talk about I want to talk about if there was a sequel to this, and I want to try to write that sequel. Oh god! Um, but before that, I the, the ending twist, the first ending twist, where you find out that Gal Gadot and The Rock are actually together and have been working together the whole time. I actually didn't see that coming. It was not really obvious, which was good. But then it, the movie could have ended like four different times after that point. Yeah. And it kept going. But then when it does end, it ends with the three of them are going to pair up and they're going to be together to do a heist together from the start of a movie. So that made me think, so what would that sequel look like? And could it be actually really, really good? So I'd like to hear what you guys think about the ending twist. Uh, uh, the, what would the movie be? They're, what are they going after in the sequel? Well, no. Are so what do, you think, uh, what do you think about the ending twist first? Did you like it? Did you see it coming? Um, I didn't quite see it coming. I did feel that something wasn't right. 
So I was like, all right, well, something's not working. And I thought maybe for a split second, maybe the other FBI agent had something to do with it. But then she was very, very one dimensional and didn't have anything to input. So then I was like, OK, well, it's got to be something with the three of them. So I thought something was coming. Yeah. Um, and it was an interesting ending. It was good. Um, I liked that it turned out that he was not an FBI agent as well, because that sets up a, a, a ability to do something else going forward. But Tiffany, it, fur- we- it further illustrates that the original FBI agent was absolutely useless. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's just absolutely. She was played by all of them the entire time. Aww. Yeah. Tiffany, yeah. what would you think about the end of the twist, or did you, did you see it coming? Yeah, no, no I I like the twist. I didn't really see it coming. No, I had a feeling that there was gonna be something with the rock because, like, yeah, oftentimes it's just like, is he an FBI agent? And it's so weird that she didn't know. Like, I don't know. She couldn't contact anybody. They used that twist to go to like go back and fill like a couple of plot holes. Yeah. They filled like two plot holes, but then they opened up like fifteen more. The just, there were so many plot holes they couldn't possibly they couldn't possibly they needed to do a job of like filling those plot holes as they went because they so sequel. Would you want to see a movie where all three of those leads are working together from the start and planning and executing a heist? Yes. Not double crossing each other. Not pulling oh, the rug out from each other. Well, the, come on. Are you writing it or? <laughs> well, who says they won't? This is the same. I'm just saying, if I if it was if I was to see this kind of movie, I would I would actually be more intrigued to see that movie than the one we just saw. I know that's not what we're gonna get, but no. <laughs> like the three of them working together and actually doing like an Ocean's Eleven style heist where they like have to plan it out and it has to be like well executed and you see them planning, 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 but then as they do it, you the audience don't actually get to see everything and they they like use twists at the end to show how they pulled it off. I love those kind of movies like Inside Man and Ocean's Eleven. But what yeah. they're going to do is have the three of them go for um, some kind of heist. They're going to introduce... What are they feeling in the second one? They said they're going to go they, after something else. They didn't, they didn't elaborate on what it was. They're just something. They haven't written they that movie yet. <laughs> $300 million or something like that or something else. Right. right. Anyway, sorry. What they're going to do though is they're going to introduce a fourth character who's yeah. going to be another big name who's going to be now the one pulling the rug out from under them. They're going to have the Interpol lady come back and all they're going to do the, they're going to do the same movie again. I, I know they are because that's what they do. This movie makes money or is successful. Yeah, they're going to follow a formula now for sure if they make another one. And I don't like that. I wish they would just do a proper heist movie with them actually planning a heist that actually makes sense and doesn't have a million plot holes and a million things so falling into place. If Steven Soderbergh was directing the sequel, you would watch. <laughs> I just just I would watch. Make it a make it a proper movie that you care about the plot of. Well, maybe have the same exactly three characters. Maybe may have the same three characters working together, but behaving the same way. You could have Ryan Reynolds be funny. You can have Gal Gadot be demure. You can have The Rock be action action Bronson. But like, like just have them work together and plan something that actually shows that they're really really good at what they do. So you wanted to go back and talk about the villain, or did you already touch on what you wanted to talk about? No, with? the villain was actually I kind of liked his character. I, cause he was ridiculous. And it, what the funny part was, is the rock was, he's in the, we're in the, the bad guy's mansion. And this is crazy dancing. The rock is now dancing with Gal Gadot. And the villain is what did, what did uh, the Dwayne Johnson say? He's five foot five. He's a bad man. He's a gangster, but he has a Napoleon complex. So he's got to come up and assert that he's the most dominant. His voice for such a small guy was awesome. His voice was hilarious. It was so creepy. His, his character was so much fun and then he apparently his thing is he likes to strangle people and then he hears his crazy revolver and he has to take his shirt off and he has this really innate tattoo and then he's he's just a very eccentric bad guy but it's almost like as a comic foil like i'm like i would rather him be if he wasn't comical i think he would be an, a fantastic bad guy but he's a comical like he's comic relief and then he yeah, gets yeah. like he, he literally he gets poisoned and knocked and then knocked out and then they chase him, and then he gets hit by that bolt. Like, that guy gets the short end of the stick, no pun intended there, so many times in a short succession. And it was all, all I, planned. When I see <laughs> that actor that was playing the um, the villain, all I can think about is his character from Silicon Valley. I don't know if you yeah. watch Silicon Valley or not. I but he was like an angel investor who comes in. He's like this super rich playboy who comes in and like invests in this like startup tech, like, okay, yeah. t- he's tech company. So good. And he's so eccentric and crazy. Like he's right. like, no he's like okay. he's amazing in it. He's so funny and so ridiculous. He's, he's just incredible, over the top. and he's Canadian. Yeah, yeah. Oh. He spends his money on everything. Yeah, just the most ridiculous things. He, he's he's good. So when I see he's him, in this, all I could think about was that character though, because he was so ridiculous in Silicon Valley, like ridiculous so much, on yeah. purpose. And I I appreciate that for sure. I just wish there weren't 
quite so many plot holes and i wish that the repet repetitiveness of the rug pulling didn't happen again and again like make that movie but just take out the repetitiveness of it don't do the same yeah. thing 10 times worth, yeah. like I said, worth of escapism for sure for sure but again uh, it's a different type of it's a different type of ride yeah you, yeah, know, you, it's, you go to an amusement park and you ride the roller coaster versus the teacups here you have different expectations, right? Yep, sure, I'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to make that I like one up that. As, I, as I went. <laughs> That's a good analogy. That sounded believable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I probably could have thought of something a little more highbrow. Okay, well, thank you for joining us on uh, on our review of Red Notice. Uh, we'll look forward to coming back and hitting this for Red Notice 2, which I am sure is in the works. That's uh, Red Notice. 100%. Yeah. Red, That's red. <laughs> Dark Red Notice. Um. Yeah. So, thanks for tuning in and watching, and or listening on the podcast. We will be uh, back again in a couple days with another snack time review, and we'll be doing another movie same time next week. So, until then, thank you.